what is going on guys it is your boy Siso here bringing you guys in a photoshop tutorial here today as you guys can see i'm doing a cool little neon like retro scheme little tutorial here today and there is no way i was gonna go like another week without actually giving my little attempt at doing a little cool little retro scheme for you guys at least showing you guys the basics of how to get like the cool ice i guess the the tone or the theme going at least for yourselves and get a nice little basis for you guys so um as you guys can see it's just a really simple layer style and, and believe it or not it's like less than 15 layers like in total including the color correction so this isn't too difficult whatsoever and as you can see i have a nice little uh, i guess purple that's pink that's definitely pink pink bluish kind of like tone going on here for the color scheme and uh really re realistically this whole entire thing is just really about color schemes um i'm just gonna really quickly see if this works i'm not really sure if this would but let's just see what other color schemes we can find like that would probably be pretty good like green and uh, green and blue looks pretty good if you guys do it right like a nice darker blue this looks pretty nice as well like like straight up like even me rotating this through like human saturation which is not like what you should do but it still looks pretty goddamn good if i'm gonna be honest so if you guys check in the description down below most likely i will have like a nice little uh, i guess like a little retro pack for you guys which i mean by that is these little grid lines so i'm gonna quickly just drag this in really quick I like these grid lines if you guys do not have these like i will put like a couple in there for in the description for you guys to like use uh, a couple mountains maybe because if you guys didn't know here um i have a rendered out landscape kind of like uh, in the in the background just like to add more space or just like kind of like fill a little more space and uh yeah if you guys don't know how to do it yourselves i'll show you guys really really quickly but if you guys want to go ahead and use the ones i have uh, su uh supplied for you guys just check in the description down below anyway really quickly to get those grid lines that i just showed you guys all you have to do is go to the plane or excuse me go to the plane in the uh the solid shapes tab in cinema 4d most likely you guys will have this program if not then just whatever just use the, the ones i gave you um plane is basically i guess your simple grid right i'm gonna make this a little bigger and basically like once you like kind of fix your orientation of how you want to get it rendered out which is perfectly fine for me right here um if you guys do not know if you just change your segments here if you change your segments this is what's changing here so from uh this focal point to like here is 20 segments so if i were to lower that you'll get a more spacious if you want more spacious you can get that uh just by lowering your segments right here however that's besides the point if you go ahead and go to the array tab which is located right here and then you hold alt on your keyboard while the plane is selected you see the layer plane is selected i'm holding alt on my keyboard and i'm just going to click on atom array and it'll automatically send my plane inside the atom array either way you can just either just like, drag it in there if you guys want to that's perfectly fine so once you have your atom array inside your plane all you're going to have to do is go to your sphere radius and just go to point two or uh, type in point two and automatically your cylinder radius will change to point two as well and there you guys go it's very very simple very very quick and it's a really cool way to get like a nice little uh plane going on here so as you can see there's 20 seconds from here to here so uh yeah if you want to change that you can also it also works for like uh landscapes which will like it right here and if i just go ahead and go to adam array again change my settings it does work for uh this as well so as you can see if i just zoom in really quick and give it a nice little render for you guys um, it also does work and you can put that in the background and put that in the foreground for this as well It just it's really like whatever the hell you guys want to do for it And uh, yeah, that's pretty much that it's gonna render out like really quickly But as you can see that it does uh, render out with like a nice little cage effect, right? And so yeah, that's that so like I said, I'm gonna be using this. This is my grid here <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and control T to free transform it and make it a lot bigger Let's see I think right here is pretty good. Yep. All right, cool. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually rash rise this layer and really quickly just change my color to the color that I have uh, suggested over here. I'm using these blue and pink concepts. If you guys want to use the same exact blues and the pinks, uh, the blue hex code is 3A, uh, 3A D 5 d 5 uh, that's the blue that i'm using kind of like a baby blue also I actually might even lower just a little bit so uh, the actual hex code that i'm going to be using is 2da7a7 -A7, um for the nice little blue here and uh, straight up the first thing i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to go ahead and just really quickly duplicate this layer now with this duplicated layer what i'm doing is obviously you can tell kind of sort of as you can see if i make a duplicate it will make the one color a nice a nicer tone or i guess a little more brighter in this case so all i'm going to really do is take my eraser which is e on my keyboard for the nice little shortcut located right here as well and a nice little soft brush and uh, basically just erase a couple, a couple spots and then just move it the slightest bit to the left or the right really doesn't matter um and you can see like it basically gets like double lines and stuff and also it's erased so it kind of has like this nice little faded effect like if i just like kind of do it a little more better than that right you can see what's going on here i'm going to change my blend mode from normal to i believe color dodge or linear dodge add let's see i think linear dodge add is pretty okay yep we're gonna, I, we'll just go color dodge right 
yeah, it just, it just makes it a little more bright. It doesn't really matter too much. And basically, that is our grid. That is our, like, little foreground for us to, like, work with. And we're going to put our text dead smack in the middle. And if I didn't say it already, I don't know if I did say it, but uh, you can see this font here. This is actually a new font of mine that I got just, like, mm, like 10 minutes ago. So, as you can see, it's called Boast Font, uh, B-O-A-S-T Font. I got it from Defont.com. It's, you know, it's free font, stuff like that. So, you can go ahead and download it if you guys want to. I uh, probably will put it in, uh, in the description as well. And this font looks pretty goddamn good for what we're doing here today as well. So... Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just type in what did I type in create or create I, what did I type in it was create okay so also located in the uh, little package we have over there in the description I'm gonna go ahead and just use the same exact layer mode I'll quickly go through what is in here however this is what's interchangeable right if you guys not want the uh, the blue and uh, green concepts all you gotta do is go to your gradient overlay it's not color overlay color overlay is like a nice little solid like multiplied blend um, which basically kind of like, I guess, evens everything out, evens these tones out. And it kind of like, you know, you can, you can play with it a little more if you don't want to use color overlay. But however, I really, does th I really do think it actually like tones down everything and makes it all obviously one color. But putting it on multiply will help you like just kind of like blend everything together. But for you, of course, you're probably going to have to change your, uh, your color here. When you change your color, let's say you had like a purple concept, just change this to like, you know, like maybe like a nice red or a nice purple here. And then you can go to the gradient overlay, click on this gradient. And then you can just change these right here. I did, it was basically, I just took one of these uh, custom, or excuse me, presetted, uh, regular presets, and then changed it up myself. Also moved these a little closer to each other so they were more of like a straight line. They're not really feathered um, to get this kind of effect. And you can just basically play around with it yourselves, and you'll figure it out very, very easily. That is the color scheme that I have for, uh, or the layer style that I have for you guys. And basically, I'm just going to quickly go back to it, press OK. And that is basically the color scheme, right? This is the, not the color scheme, the layer scheme. I don't know why I keep saying color scheme, but make sure you guys understand that you got to obviously change the uh, the gradient overlay and just the color overlay for the actual layer mode. Everything else is pretty simple. Uh, simple bevel and embos uh, with like a nice 90 and altitude one angle. And basically just gives me a nice little, I guess, a cut across, as you can see. Kind of like a cut across. Uh, and the stroke, of course. I'm going to put a nice little white stroke on it. And this basically at two, 100%, of course. And then inner shadow is a basically a zero, zero, four size, multiply all the way up 100. That way we get a nice little like, I guess like a, a little indent you can see right in here. Um, You guys already know what these do. And of course the outer glow, a nice little outer glow. Uh, I, I, ch I chose a pink, uh, kind of like a lighter pink tone of this one right here that I actually have, I'm gonna be using in the future. And then the drop shadow here is a very simple uh, drop shadow with a, a, a 90 angle, which is up and down, of course, so that way it just goes right below the actual text. And then your distance is at uh, nine or so, whatever, really doesn't matter. However, your size and your spread are at zero. That way your lines are not feathered or your, uh, excuse me, your drop shadow is not feathered and it's all just straight edge. And if you guys want to, to make it even like better, um, you can go ahead and like kind of like pen tool maybe like to actually make it all connect if you guys want to. That's just really being really, really picky. But for me, this is okay for now and we're pretty much ready to keep going. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another blue layer and I'm gonna go really quickly. And, oh, we'll, we'll do that actually later. Um, what I'm gonna do right now actually is I'm gonna go ahead and do the simple little top foreground, or excuse me, the background kind of a little bit. So what I did was I took a grid here, which is my grid lines here. And I'm gonna take this, pull this up here. Actually, we're gonna pull the one we erased up here. Right, we're gonna pull the one we erased up here, and I just basically dragged and made a duplicate of it. So if you didn't see that, all I did was I went ahead and just press Alt, drag it up. And while holding Alt, it makes a duplicate for me, as you can see right there. Or you can press Control J on your keyboard. And basically, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my rectangle marquee tool. Right, I'm basically gonna kind of like see where it starts off this background, this first grid right here. That's what I'm trying to look at, and I'm gonna make sure I cut off whatever. Like I can see these lines right here. I don't want them, so I'm gonna press Delete on my keyboard. It will get rid of them for me. And then basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna call this grid highlights so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And this is the top grid. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to uh, filter, blur, motion blur, and motion blur it to about maybe, actually 40 pixels is pretty good. 40 pixels, press okay. As you guys can see, it kind of like fills a little sp uh, space on the top side, which is pretty cool. Now, also really quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and actually drag in, excuse me, this little landscape that I did which I told you guys you can of course either download or make yourself one if you guys want to. I showed you guys how to do that as well. I'm gonna quickly rasterize this and I'm also gonna take my rec rec uh, rectangle marquee tool and delete that as well where that files on the grid line. And I'm just gonna change my blend mode from uh, normal to uh, divide, which is pretty cool. And there we go. Right there we got a nice little basis going on for ourselves. And as you can see, it kind of has this little outline which is basically, uh, I guess, default when you actually render it out uh, in Cinema 4D yourselves. 
and pretty cool right comes out really nicely so now what we can do is we can just go ahead and do a simple with this blue here right hex code 3a uh, d5 d5 press ok and with this blue here I'm just gonna click a couple times maybe like here just like so it's pretty sporadic right just want to get some light in this banner design and uh, right there is pretty looks pretty good right there so I'm gonna go ahead and change my blend mode to uh, color dodge or linear dodge add let's see which one will look better I think color dodge I think I'm down with color dodge all right yep that'll look pretty good so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do really quickly as well as we're gonna do our first little set of really quick simple color corrections now what I'm gonna do is brightness and contrast and pretty much the settings are going as followed negative 30 for the uh, brightness and then 60 for your contrast and then we're gonna go ahead and head into our adjustment tabs again go to vibrance and we're gonna go ahead and just head up up uh, I think at like 60 and then 25 for our vibrance as you can see right now we're starting to get that really nice like glow neon theme which is basically exactly what I am looking for so now what I go ahead and do really quickly is I'm gonna do this you guys probably know about this already I'm just gonna basically select everything on my uh, my PSD everything all of it uh, with by holding like basically clicking on the first layer holding shift click on the last layer including the background Press Control J, that will make a duplicate for you guys, and then press Control E, that will merge it all for you guys to actually go ahead and do this. Now, if you guys were here like back in the day, okay, you already know what I'm freaking doing. So basically, what I'm gonna do is use the rectangle marquee tool and make these little skinny triangles, or not skinny triangles, rectangles. And I really, I really have to do it on the, the top part, just but focus right here for a second, right? Put it like a lot right here, and make sure you kind of like get where these lines are intersecting, or I guess like you know. These little cross paths you want to get the cross path going on so what you're going to do is on this little layer that you have duplicated for you like is, is basically the this is the the actual design all in one layer right so what i'm going to do is with these little rectangle marquee tool rectangles i can press right click and gives me option to layer via cut and that's what i'm going to go ahead and do layer via cut and then basically this layer here can just be deleted it's perfectly fine so right now you're going to see nothing different it's like uh what's there it's it's there but it's not actually there so all you're going to do really quickly is just basically take your arrow keys and move it like either top left top bottom whatever the hell you want to move it and you can see it gives this really cool little simple like kind of like a glitchy kind of effect and if you guys were you know around in the past and stuff like that you guys already know about this but this really works pretty well with this kind of style going on here and I'm pretty happy and satisfied with how that actually looks now I'm gonna also now add a simple little pink color here and now this kind of like makes the entire thing and this is kind of like where you're almost pretty much done actually I'm gonna go ahead and click pretty aggressively in the middle section and then maybe over here and then I kind of want to put it even more up there Actually, yeah I think that's okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my blend mode from normal to color dodge add or linear dodge add excuse me and pretty much you can see it's a more even more freaking glow and as you can see it's not too hard what's going on here right so I did put this above my color correction so I'm gonna really quickly make a nice little adjustment color correction so I'm gonna go back into brightness and contrast here and I'm gonna change my color correction to 535 and it'll basically kind of give my pink now a nice, like, I guess, a scheme to kind of like go with everything. That's what's going on here. And literally, you're pretty much done. Like, this is basically what I actually have here. As you can see, it's a pretty fast layer. Now, I had a little other stuff. What I mean by other stuff is I had a couple of uh, little, like, stocks for my 60K pack. So if you guys don't have this already, I'll most likely try to put this in the description as well. But I'm pretty sure you guys have this. Like, there's no way you missed this upload. Uh, where is that stock at? Uh, hello? Where is it that this would actually look pretty good as well on that for that style? Oh, here it is. So I'm, I'm just going to drag this in here. And what I did was, right, I took this layer. I duplicated it twice. So I made a nice little double duplicate. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I put this below my text. And I'm also going to press Control U, which brings up a, uh, the hue and saturation quick adjustments. So it's basically doing this, right? This is the layer here. It's basically going to image adjustments and then going to hue and saturation is basically what I did, but control U is the quick little shortcut for it. I'm gonna click the word colorize. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lower my brightness or my lightness, excuse me, down. As you can see, it actually just basically takes a nice little color going on here. This actually looks pretty good as pink. I had it as blue the last time, but I think I'm gonna keep it as pink this time. So as you can see, I give myself a little color and I was gonna take my rectangle marquee tool. And I just deleted it a couple times just to kind of give it like a nice little streak. Um, 
right? Oops, don't want to delete like the entire thing. I have to make a skinnier rectangle here. But yeah, that's pretty much what I did for this. And it, it came out pretty good, as you guys saw in the actual example. Um, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy and satisfied with that. Really quickly, however, I'm also going to add another, I guess, a nice little blue again. Just to try to get some more color in here. Let's add this above everything so there's no weirdness. Uh, let's see. Maybe like a couple hits around and like change the color mode or blend mode, excuse me. To like color dodge, linear dodge. If we do color dodge, we can also press control U and kind of like flip through the colors over here to see what other colors we can, we can like use. Um, that dark blue looks pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied with that. So pretty much that, there you go. <laughs> like it's, uh, I told you it's going to be like really like, like, what is this? Like, like 15 layers, technically whatever, not going to count. But yeah, as you guys can see, this is pretty much the base of creating a little neon, little retro kind of fun little theme going on here. Now also like you can do like, I guess like the, the neon sign kind of thing going on. And if you like find a really good font for it, I'm just going to go ahead and just, I'm just going to write the word glow really quick. Now this font is probably not the best for it, but if you guys want to get like a really simple, quick, kind of like a neon glowed, I guess, uh, like, you know, like a sign kind of theme, all I would do is I would lower my fill all the way down to zero, which basically gets rid of the image itself, but it allows the layer styles to still bleed through. So I'm going to go to stro uh, stroke here, change my color to white, and then pretty much just lower it down to like either one or two. I don't really matter. It doesn't really matter too much, but you might want to also change it to a color. Actually, it might not be a bad idea to change it to a color. And then pretty much shrink it down, right? And then what you want to do is just simply uh, make a new layer, soft brush again, right? You can use the same exact color that you use for the actual text itself or the stroke itself, and just dab a couple times around the actual uh, design or the actual letter uh, lettering, and just change it to like linear dodge add. You can flip through as many uh, little layer sizes as you want, but that's basically the basis of actually getting like a nice little glow kind of effect going on there. And that's just basically like the theme. That's like a really, really simple kind of thing you could do. You can also like maybe yourself go back to the actual layer styles on this glow text here and do like outer glow itself to make it look a lot more, like pop out a lot more. Put like a nice little background color on it, right? You can really, you can go in on this guys. Like it's just like all this little fun stuff. This is basically the basis to actually start creating your little fun theme. And uh, you literally, that's pretty much it. I'm going to end it off right here. Thank you guys so much for freaking watching. Do not forget, 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below, which mostly be the PSD of this video, which is kind of like a pre-made design, you know, in a way. So, uh, yeah, this is the one I created with a little time that I had. I, I spent a little more time on mine, of course, but you will, of course, find out how to do this. It's very, very simple. And like I said, don't forget to check the description for all those little cool little stocks and stuff I'm going to put in there. Also, do not forget to follow me on Twitter at SysWayHQ for any, uh, like, I guess, updates when I go live on, like, you know, Twitch or whatever, or just to talk to me. Why not? Follow me. Um, don't forget to also check out my Selfie, selfie.com slash SysWayHQ for any premates and packs as always well as $3. And, of course, the Everything Pack being the number one thing I have on my store. Over 700 people have purchased it already. And basically, you get everything on my store that you see on the store currently. And any products that come out will be, uh, it'll be emailed to you for free uh, also in, like, the same exact day that the product also comes out. So it's a pretty dope product. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. And I'll talk to you guys later. So let's you out. Peace. Yo, I hope you stood to the end of the video really quickly. I want to show you guys, really, like, I was trying to, like, figure out, like, what else I can do to, like, kind of make the final image look really cool. So what I actually did was really quickly, I added, like, a nice little uh, exposure, uh, color correction exposure. And I went ahead and just put my offset up a, a bit, uh, I guess, what, 0 0.0202. And I put my gamma correction up as well. Right? Okay, okay. And then hear me out. If you just lower your opacity down a little bit. It's about what, like, let's say 60, right? And you can see it kind of like flattens everything out, makes everything look kind of like that, like that old TV kind of retro scheme. I literally just Googled concrete. So I'm going to put this image right in here. And what I did was I just pretty much, let's make this a little more bigger to actually fit the entire thing. Perfect. I just pretty much uh, changed my blender from normal to overlay and dropped my opacity down. And as you can see, that added a lot more than it probably like felt like, bro. That look how that looks pretty good, right? Dude, all right, so cool. Now you have a little fun little thing to do as well and make yours look a little more cooler, I guess, if you guys switch to the end of the video. So yeah, yep, that's it.